It's one of these operational principles of LP. You cannot not influence and be influenced. It's not possible. At some level. Well. All little thoughts and parts interacting and going on. Brilliant. I used to write software some years ago. <clears throat> and I ended up writing a software called C++. Which means it's an object oriented language. And what that means is... Before you even start writing anything, you draw pictures or you design it. So you're interested in the functionality, not the inside workings initially. You leave the inside workings to a programmer. Hi. And then you work on the interface between people. So if you like, questions like, what colour is it, as an interface question. You don't know how they come up with that answer on the inside. You just know they do. Take the example of a CD player. What functions does it have? Right. So what can you do with a CD once it's in the machine? What function would you use to do that? Play. Yeah. What are that kind of standard functions are there? Forward, right. Back. Okay, so this is the interface part. If you take so that with a torch, the, like to use a battery for something, um, it's got an on button and off button. That's the public interface. You don't need to know about the connections on the inside and the little parts of the battery, the circuitry, maybe it's a diode if you're lucky, a spring to keep it in, all that. You don't need to see it. You don't need to know about that. But these are the parts on the inside that do the work. There's a concept in NLP and in lots of therapy. Take, for example, Gestalt therapy. Fritz Perls. One of the people that were modelled by the original creators of NLP. Ooh. Gestalt's got a big influence in NLP. But Gestalt was about the parts that create a whole human being. You've got a Zederic Burnian transaction analysis, the parent, the adult, the child. Imaginary parts that, they're not inside of you. There's no parent, adult and child in you, or outside of you. And yet, you can act as if there is. Because you've things can happen, you get a certain smell and poof, you're back to that time that place, when you smelled it the first time, you might not even be conscious of it you know when you're telling your children off, or reprimanding or people you shouldn't do it, I don't even have that belief, what am I doing so there's neurological pathways there's pieces, parts inside of you that run stuff that's the metaphor of parts and it is a metaphor Mandy earlier on, if I may said there was a part of you that wanted to go off and explore your emergent metaphor and there was a part here that was saying no no it's just now the idea of parts work is we've got different parts inside of us maybe you could say there's a creative part it's an intellectual part there's a part that appreciates humour. There's a part that wants to jump off a cliff naked. Don't think that. That's the cry. And quite often when people come to you to see you in the terms of therapy or in the terms of coaching, they're going to present you with something they want. Okay? Or some sort of problem. This is what it tends to boil down to. And it's again, it's what state are they in? What's their outcome, and what's the addition or subtraction of resources to go from there to there? You can reframe that whole thing. Okay, well, if I want something and I haven't got it yet, there's a part of me that wants it. That's what I'm here for. And, clearly, because I haven't got it yet, there's a part that's responsible for not letting that happen. When we get here into the whole field and arena of positive intention, Take, for example, someone that wants to stop smoking. I want to stop smoking. Brilliant. So it's like there's a part of you that wants to stop. Well, yeah. And there's a part of you that, for whatever reason, I don't know yet, wants to perpetuate the behaviour. Well, kind of. So I'm intru I introduce content like that straight away. Sometimes people will go, well, there's a part of me, and it's dead, dead obvious. They do something like that and like that. It's like there's an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. The more you listen out for this stuff, the more you'll hear it. But it's given away a lot in people's body positions as well. Generally, this is just a working hypothesis. If someone's over to one side, they're not balanced. There's one part doing a bit more than what they want. 
could be a cause effect. You can look at it in that way. But the bottom line is, we pretend there's pogs. There was a point yesterday when um, we were going to make up some acronym for that. What was? What did we end up with? Right, brilliant. Can you remember what it actually stands for? Because this is half the thing with the acronym. Are you realising more and more that every question you say or even statement is like a frame that focuses attention? I said, can you remember? This is the function of framing another one. But getting back to what we did, I invited you as a group to decide which one you wanted, having kind of narrowed it down to one about some animal bestiality and some plastic additions to women. Usually women, might be, whatever. And you picked one. But the invitation behind that was, how do you decide, as a group, how do you negotiate to get to that point where we're all okay, or at least okay enough to get forward? This is often the job of a therapist. This is about negotiation. Part. This is about accepting and acknowledging a positive intention. And Harry's going to do some more parts work with you tomorrow in the form of a six-step reframe. And the bottom line is if you do the talky-talky version with someone and you're calibrating, this is the real key, you get exactly the same results. Exactly the same. You've got to calibrate. And calibration in that terms means literally disregarding what people say consciously. They'll be telling you one thing. Oh, I have this behaviour for such and such. Say to stop smoking. What's the positive intention to stop smoking? Oh, it's to stay calm. Oh, it's because I'm addicted to it. Oh, it's because when I was little I used to suck lollipops. Oh, it's because um, one day I was left on my own with my granddad and he made us watch Kojak. You get all these reasons and reasons and reasons, which may or may not be true. It's conscious mind stuff. So you bypass that by getting honest and conscious signals. Finger signals are very honest ones, it's just like, hmm, are you sure about that? Yes. And you see the physical signal before you hear. Other stuff. Parts work. About negotiation.